Today we're going to find the formula for the perimeter of an ellipse. And what we'll see is that what we come up with is a lot more complicated than the formula for the perimeter or the circumference of a circle, which of course is 2 pi times the radius. Okay, so we're going to use a couple of tools here. First will be this thing connected to Euler's formula that allows us to write the cosine of alpha as e to the i alpha plus e to the minus i alpha over 2. So in terms of complex exponentials. Furthermore, we'll use the following power series for 1 minus x to the half power. And we're going to derive this really quickly. Okay, so let's start with this. We've got 1 minus x to the half. But notice that that is simply the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n times the binomial coefficient 1 half choose n times x to the n. So that's by the binomial expansion formula. But now let's rewrite this where we've started to expand our binomial coefficient. Well, actually, first let's pull a 1 out. And by pulling a one out, I mean the zeroth term. But notice if we evaluate this at n equals zero, we get the number one, so we're okay there. And then left over, we'll have the sum as n goes from one to infinity, well, of all of this stuff. So I'll have minus one to the n, and then one half choose n will be a descending product of n terms starting at a half in the numerator, and then n factorial in the denominator. So that'll be 1 half times minus 1 half times minus 3 halves all the way down to 3 minus 2n over 2. And then all of this is over n factorial. And then we have x to the n here. So if you count this up, so from here to here, there are n minus 1 terms. But then this additional term will give us the nth term. So we do have a de descending product of n terms starting at a half. But now let's start putting this all together. So let's notice, like I said, there are n minus 1 terms here. So let's notice we can put these n minus 1 negative ones together with these n negative ones to net us a single negative one. In other words, a minus sign right here. So that gives us 1 minus. Now we have this sum as n goes from 1 to infinity. But we've taken all of the minus 1's out here, leaving us with this ascending product, 1 times 3 times 5, ending at 2n minus 3. And then we have n total 2's in the denominator. So that'll leave me with 2 to the n. And then we've got this n factorial in the denominator as well. So there we have it. There's our formula for 1 minus x to the half. So we've got this taken care of. So now let's move on to our main objective here, which is getting a formula for the perimeter of an ellipse. OK, so our first step will be to parametrize this ellipse. And we're going to use maybe a slightly non-standard parametrization just to make everything work out a little bit nicer. So let's set x equal to a sine theta. And we'll set y equal to b cosine theta. And we'll note that this draws the full ellipse as we let theta range from 0 to 2 pi. And then also notice that if we do x squared over a squared, we get sine squared. y squared over b squared gives us cosine squared. Those add together to give us 1 by the Pythagorean trig identity. And then let's also recall by the formula for the arc length of a parametrized curve, we have L, this length, or this perimeter of our ellipse, is the integral from 0 to 2 times pi of the square root of dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared, and then d theta. And that's all under a square root. So I won't derive that here, but I think you can find a derivation of that fairly easily. OK, but notice that that will simplify to the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of a squared times cosine squared theta plus b squared times sine squared theta d theta. OK, so let's bring that L down and maybe put a box around this. So this will end up being the length that we want to calculate or the integral that we want to calculate. So it's kind of well known that this integral well doesn't have a nice closed form. 
which means that we're gonna have to evaluate it using power series, but that shouldn't be a total surprise given that we introduced this power series or we recalled this power series down here. So now we just have to put the argument of the square root inside of the integral into the right form so we can apply this formula. Okay, so let's get to doing that. So let's take this argument of the square root and we're gonna rewrite it two different ways. So I'll take this a squared cos squared theta plus uh, b squared sine squared theta. And first off, what I'll do is I'll maybe take this cosine squared theta and I'm gonna rewrite it as one minus sine squared theta. So what is that gonna do for me? Well, that allows me to write this as Let's see, we'll have a squared and then plus b squared minus a squared times sine squared theta after putting everything together. Okay, well that kind of motivates us to do the same kind of thing with sine squared. So in fact, we can take this sine squared and write it as one minus cosine squared theta. So that allows us to rewrite this as Let's see, we'll have a b squared, and then after that we'll have plus a squared minus b squared times cosine squared theta. But notice that we've got now two expressions for this argument of the square root inside of the integral. So if we've got two expressions for them, we might as well add them together and, and we'll get this nice symmetric expression. Okay, so let's do that. So that means we have a squared cos squared theta plus b squared sine squared theta is equal to one half. And then like I said, the sum of those two, the green and then the peach color. So that'll end up leaving us with a squared plus b squared and then plus a squared minus b squared times, well, we'll have cosine squared minus sine squared. So like I said, cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Okay, great. And now we're gonna apply some, well, algebraic identities and some trigonometric identities. So first of all, this difference of cosine squared and sine squared is a double angle for cosine. So that's cosine of two theta. So that's one thing that we'll start off by noticing. And then this sum of squares can be really written with something that's sometimes called a polarization formula. So this is indeed equal to one half times a plus b squared plus one half times a minus b squared. So let's notice that we'll get half a squared plus half a squared, which is a squared. The same thing for b squared, but then the cross terms will cancel. So now let's maybe take this expression and factor a half out and an a plus b squared out. So that'll give us an a plus b quantity squared over four. And then let's see then we'll have an a plus b squared over a plus b squared, which is the number one. And then we'll have a minus b over a plus b quantity squared from factoring out of this term. And then after noticing that this has a difference of squares factorization, a minus b times a plus b, when we factor the a plus b quantity squared out of that, we'll be left with a minus b over a plus b. And then we have this cos two theta here. And then since we pulled out an extra half, we need a multiple of two right there. But now let's introduce a little bit of notation. Let's set u equal to a minus b over a plus b and see that this is in fact equal to a plus b over two quantity squared. And then we have one plus u squared plus two times u times cosine of two theta. So there's our nice expression for the argument of the inside of the square root inside of that integral. Okay, so let's start at that point. So this is where we are at the moment. If we set u equal to a minus b over a plus b, we've got this nice 
length formula for our perimeter. So inside of the square root, we have u squared minus 2u times cosine of 2 theta plus 1. Now I'm going to do a trick related to the symmetry of the ellipse. So let's notice that the ellipse defined by these parametric curves will have exactly the same length as the ellipse defined by the parametric curves where we switch A and B. And that's pretty clear because that just has the effect of rotating this 90 degrees, but it doesn't stretch it or anything. But in that case, we would have U exchanged for minus U. So since they have the same length and U exchanges for minus U, that gives us an equality of the integral that looks like this and the integral that looks like this with a minus sign. So I'm just going to go ahead and sneak a minus sign in there. So now what I'd like to do is play a little bit more with this expression that we have inside of the square root. So let's notice that we can take this. I'll just copy it down here and we can apply this formula over here, which we haven't used yet, which is related to Euler's complex exponential formula. So we can multiply both sides by two and then replace this two cosine two theta with the numerator here. So that leaves us with u squared minus, so we have e to the i two theta plus e to the minus i two theta times u plus one. But let's notice that the product of these two things is equal to one. So that gives us a nice factorization here. And so this factors as u minus e to the i 2 theta times u minus e to the minus i 2 theta. So if you multiply all of that out, well, it works out exactly like you would like it to. But now what I'll do is I'll factor an e to the i 2 theta out of the first one and an e to the minus i 2 theta out of the second one. But that's like factoring a 1 out of the whole thing, so it doesn't change anything. It just allows us to rewrite this as 1 minus u times e to the i 2 theta, and then 1 minus u times e to the minus i 2 theta, where actually these switch places here just based off of the way that we factored this out. Now let's notice that this expression is inside of the square root, but it's made up of two parts of something like this over here. So that gives us some motivation to look at this expansion, and that's what we'll do now. Now we've just motivated the need to look at the expansion of these two binomials, well, to the half power. So let's do that. So let's see. So if you look at these, we can exchange each of these for the right-hand side here. So this first one will be one minus the sum as n goes from one to infinity of, we've got this one times three times five, all the way up to two n minus three over, 2 to the n times n factorial, and then we've got a u to the n, and then an e to the i 2n theta. Great. And then we have essentially the same thing for the next one, except we'll have an e to the minus 2n theta. So let's get that written down. So there we have it. Now we're ready to multiply that up and see what happens. So in order to do this product, let's introduce a little bit of notation. So I'm gonna call these coefficients right here c sub n, and this occurs in both cases. Okay, so just multiplying this out, we'll have one times one, which is one, and then we'll have minus the sum as n goes from one up to infinity of, and so what we're getting here is the sum of these two objects right here. So we'll have a c sub n, and then a u to the n, and then an e to the i 2n theta plus e to the minus i 2n theta. So that's like the cross term. So that's like from taking this multiplying into one, the second one multiplying into one, and adding. Okay, but then we'll also have this uh, other term where we multiply the two. So that'll be plus the sum as n goes from one to infinity of, so c to the n, I'm actually gonna change my index here to m, so c sub m, u to the m, e to the i, two m theta, and then times the next one. 
So I've got the sum as n goes from one to infinity, c to the n, u to the n, e to the minus i to n theta. Okay, great. So that's where we are at the moment. And now let's look at each of these. So this bit right here turns into, let's see, it'll be a two times cosine two n theta which means that we can actually disregard it. And we can disregard it because in the end, we'll be putting this inside of an integral that goes over the full period of cosine. And that means it'll collapse just by simple integration. So I'm gonna like put a cross through this. This doesn't mean that it's equal to zero. This means that we just don't need to worry about it in our setting. And now let's bring this down. So now we'll have one plus that product. And now we're gonna use Cauchy's formula for the product of two series. And that's gonna give us something like this. So we'll have the sum as n goes from one to infinity. And inside of that, we'll have the sum as k goes from one to n of, well, it ends up being something like this. The kth term from this series times the n minus kth term from the other series. So that's gonna look something like c sub k times c sub n minus k times Let's see, well, in the end, we'll have a u to the n regardless, so maybe we can put that in the end because we'll have u to the k times u to the n minus k. But then we'll have e to the i 2k theta times e to the minus i 2n minus k theta. Okay, and then like I said, this is all times u to the n. But now let's put these two together. So putting these two together, we have e to the i, and then I think it looks something like four times k minus two times n times theta. Okay, nice. But looking at this, and then maybe like playing around with a couple of examples, what you'll see is that if n is odd, then everything gets paired off in a way so that you pick up these cosine terms which integrate out to zero. And then if n is even, the only thing that survives in the end is the top term, the k equals, well, n even term. So in the end, this is gonna collapse to a single sum which looks something like this. So we'll have one plus the sum as n goes from one to infinity of c to the c sub n squared and then u to the two n. And where do those e to the i whatevers go? Well, they had to cancel each other. And they canceled the, each other based off the fact that that's the only thing that survived. So now the last thing that we can do is take this one and bring it inside of the sum, starting the sum at zero because now we have the structure that enables us to do that. In other words, the pattern holds for n equals zero, which it didn't before, which is why we have this one outside. And I should say that this is not really equality. This is up to putting inside of the integral and not canceling. Okay, so now, well, let's maybe put this object inside of the integral and see what we get. So after rewriting some things and then setting u back to its value, this is where we end up. So I'd like to notice that there are no thetas inside of this theta integral anymore, and that's based off of the way that we paired everything into the cosine functions that integrated out. But now, if we're integrating which is, what is essentially a constant, with respect to theta that is, over the interval from zero to two pi, we just get two pi times that constant. But we already have a two here, so that'll cancel. And then we can maybe bring this a plus b in here, giving us this final formula. So we have pi, and then the sum as n goes from zero to infinity, we have one times three times five, all the way up to two m minus three, over two to the n times n factorial. This whole thing is squared. And then we have a minus b to the two n power over a plus b all to the two n minus one power. 
So there we have it. That is, well, a formula for the perimeter or the circumference of an ellipse. Maybe it's not super satisfying, but I think what it does do is it underscores how like strangely complicated dealing with ellipses is. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you wanna get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.